What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another week of the GZ Chop Shop podcast. I am your host, Project Itachi, joined by my good friend and co-host, Warners. And if you're joining us, this is our first episode back after the Thanksgiving holiday. So everybody, welcome back. And we're rolling into a very busy month already from the get-go. This episode is dropping the day of the Game Awards. So if you're listening to this in the future, in the day of the Game Awards, we will be having a post-Game Awards podcast. This one's going to be discussing our predictions, our thoughts before the actual show. And if you're listening to it even after, so see if we were, if we were correct, if we guessed right. Now, there are 29 categories in the Game Awards, but we are only going to focus on one, and that is going to be Game of the Year. That's going to be our singular focus. And speaking on focus, Warners, as you're aware, I have been on this seven-day challenge for Magic Mind. Yeah, I know they uh, they had recently reached out to you a couple weeks ago, and you finally got some samples. Yes. And you've been drinking it for quite a few days now. How's it working for I'm I'm really curious. Honestly, I'm going to say I am wondering how I have managed with without this in my life, if I'm being completely honest. I'm usually very skeptical of, you know these types of things and magic mind is a mental performance shot and you know they when they reached out they were like hey we you know want to send you some samples and try and you'd give it a try and see how you feel over the over the next couple of weeks and yeah, I, i've seen i've seen kind of a, a boost in your energy and i i didn't know if you had started it yet or if mm-hmm. that was the reason why so i guess that's the reason why because you've just been going 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 meanwhile i'm at work and you know, I'm a nurse. I work on the ICU. I work long shifts. Uh, and I drink a lot of coffee, which I don't like because I'm always jittery and I crash a lot. Get the anxiety I, later. You see me after I do a few shifts and I'm like, so it sounds like I need to try this stuff out. Absolutely. Especially since they don't rely on a caffeine quick fix. It's definitely meant to be taken over the course of a few days. Like so it builds it up truly- in your system. Yep, so it can truly get into your system and work its magic. And it it definitely lives up to its name because you know me, I'm always stressed. I'm always like high strung. I've got like 32 window tabs open when I'm working. And Magic Mind has been able to get me very focused, very centered. It's removed a lot of the stress from my mind. I've had more positive energy. I've been far more productive. Right before we started this, this episode, I grabbed my my bottle of uh magic my my only regret is that i can't i can't drink more than one a day is is that is it you only drink one a day and then it just builds up in Mm -hmm. your system okay yes so i I need to get me some of this stuff then because you know in my line of work i definitely need to stay focused work efficiently pay attention to what i'm doing and try not to be dead inside because i do feel dead inside sometimes working these long ass shifts so how can I how can I uh, get some of this stuff? Well, we're actually they're actually having a limited offer for everyone who's a friend of the GZ Chop Shop podcast. So if you go to the website right now, magicmind.com forward slash chop shop twenty, you can get forty eight percent off your first subscription or twenty percent off your one time purchase using code chop shop twenty at the checkout a link will be in the episode description. So if you guys want to try this seven-day Magic Mind Challenge with me, I will be doing it all the way through the month of December. Um, and you guys know me. I, I'm i always stressed, overworked, and everything. So I highly recommend it to anyone who has a very busy life and is easily distracted. Cannot stress it enough. Magic Mind has changed pretty much my day and i love it so if you guys want to try the seven day challenge with me check out the link in the description below put in the code chop chop 20 at checkout and grab yourself some magic mind and a huge thank you to magic mind for sponsoring this episode 
Now, let's talk Game Awards. Who we? There has been a certain energy for this year's, for good reason, too. For good reason, because something's happening in the Gaming Awards this year that has made everybody just kind of go WTF. And I think we can all agree what that thing is. It's a DLC being part of Game of the Year. And not just a DLC, but also a remake. But the DLC is kind of what's getting the most kind of looks right now. I think I agree, man. I love, I love Elden Ring. One of the most fun games I've ever played, especially in co-op with a friend. So fun. I loved Shadow of the Earth Tree. It's a fantastic game. And FromSoft, FromSoft makes amazing games. And few people will dispute that. The problem is a DLC being up for Game of the Year sets some very unwanted precedences, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And and you and I, we both played Shadow of the Earth Tree. And like you said, you know, it goes without saying that it was an amazing DLC. And we're talking game of the year. And my personal fear, and I think a lot of gamers' fear, is that if Elden Ring for some reason takes home game of the year for a DLC, it will tell developers that us always saying we want new stories, we want full games is a lot. And they're going to go, okay, well, how come a DLC just won game of the year if you guys want these full fleshed out stories at launch? Obviously, that's not the case. And I don't want to, you know, and I don't even know if it's so much the influence of gamers or what because with everything involving voting there's always like a board so are investors trying to push this because as we've seen over the last few years there's been a huge shift in the market digital content making a huge push cloud gaming making a huge push dlc's being shoved into every game down consumers throats so are the investors working behind the scenes to make us just accept DLC as the future of gaming? Like like if there's like influence? Yeah, if there's influence this. behind the scene. You know, I don't want to like... It's, I mean, it's like all conjecture at this point. I, I, I don't want to like sound like I'm making stuff up, you know? It, but it, it doesn't seem unreasonable to wonder that because there have... A lot of these companies are greedy. They do shady things all the time, whether it's Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo. I feel like people who only support wholeheartedly one of these companies are blind. They're all greedy in their own right. They all have developers and studios that put out great games, but they're also all billion-dollar companies that they're in it for the money, and they do some shady stuff sometimes. So I wouldn't put... It wouldn't wouldn't put past me if... If investors were doing some shady stuff, but for the sake of not going there and trying to be positive, I'm sorry, guys. I like my conspiracy theories. I go down rabbit holes sometimes. Uh, personally, I think Metaphor Re Fantasio is going to take it. I think it's hands down going to take it. I know what people are thinking, especially people who have not played Altus games or us uh, <laughs> Altus games, Atlas Atlas games. I was thinking Elder Ring the. Help this plateau, but Black Myth Wukong is a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. So it could win. I could be wrong for sure. I just really feel that metaphor Re Fantasio is going to take it. It's just a personal opinion. It's a feeling. It's not because I think Black Myth is a bad game or doesn't deserve it. So I will say, in my personal opinion, I hope metaphor refantasio takes it atlas is long overdue for their time in the spotlight you've talked about that before like they haven't they don't win awards they make good games but it's a niche it's a niche area niche game yeah it's very niche um and 
the difficulty of their games usually pushes people away. Um, the Shin Megami Tensai series is a famously difficult series. So a lot of people, and it's been around since like the 90s. And you had mentioned before that uh, it's not well known, apparently, that this is connected to Persona. Yes. A lot of people have it backwards, and they think that the games are branching from Persona. But Persona is the, actually the spinoff of Shin Megami. So for all you Persona fans who have only played Persona, you are playing the spinoff. It's just more popular because it had the high school theme which a lot of us could relate to. It reminded us of our anime shows where Shin Megami gets a little bit more religious. And I don't mean just like in Christianity religious. I mean, they bring the mythologies from all the cultures into one game. Yeah. Demons, angels, gods, goddesses. So you, you want to... This man's about to give us a whole hour long rant. I, I messed up when I was like, they're connected. And he's like... As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the branching tree. Like, calm but down, it's, buddy. It's a good series, and and Atlas has been world building for decades. It is fun to be part of any game, say genre, but uh, any any game lore, I I, I suppose that has decades of built. Like they're they're rare, decades of built up lore and and, and titles and stuff. And Metaphor Refantasio is its own isolated thing. And I think that was what a lot of people were waiting for was a chance to step into that realm and not feel overwhelmed. And it, because gave, it gave them a chance to have more liberties with the game, too. It, it gave them a chance to have more liberties with the game. It gave them a chance to be in an Atlas game that has connections to the Persona, to the Shin Megami, without being one of those games. So it was a good entry point for a lot of players into it. And I think that's why it was loved. The soundtrack hits hard. I mean, that is a phenomenal soundtrack on that game. And the story, while politically driven, is still enjoyable. The characters are endearing. And you, you want to play it more than once. Replayability. And it's, it's, it, and it's such a good game. Which is a big... Unlike maybe even several years ago replayability wasn't really a factor that we considered when thinking about a game but it is it's a big part of that consideration now and that's something all these games that are up for game in a year actually have in common on some more than others black myth wukon lots of replayability absolutely amazing story gorgeous cutscenes whether you watched it in dub or the original Chinese, amazing. And I think a lot of people, especially our generation, I think millennials, uh, we grew up with the original Dragon Ball. Yeah. And playing Black Myth Wukong resonated with us in a way that just, just hit so hard for us. Especially that original scene when uh at the beginning of the game when he jumps on the cloud with the flying power Nimbus, pole, yep. and we're like it's it's, it's Ken flying Nimbus. like we we were just it was it was a high mo i got i got goosebumps and it, it was just so cool and then we have a uh, final fantasy 7 rebirth which i know you played a ton of and uh w what did you think about that game and how do you think it compares to like the, the other two i enjoy Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, I did not play it as thoroughly as our friend Burn did. Burn is a huge Final Fantasy buff. And I know he played it, he beat it, and then he hasn't gone back to it. So, and as someone that, you know, he loves his JRPGs, if he can't find a reason to go back to it, then it's saying like you know hey i've been in this i've done this once before so and that's it's kind replayability of it. isn't quite there but it's a good story in its own it's right a good and story it's, it's, it does well yeah. to rebuild on the game that already yeah. existed its predecessor it definitely has a, a huge nostalgia kick i personally enjoy revisiting you know the classic characters in this alternate timeline of you know the story 
or I guess you could say multiverse approach, because they, they do acknowledge the fact that this isn't the original Final Fantasy. We know there right. was well, another. They did, they did a good job with it, though. There was, yeah. there was some pushback and like hesitations, but once the game dropped and people played it, they were the the outcome and the the view and take from people have been pretty positive. Yeah. Now, Bellatro, I I have not played it. I have watched a lot of gameplay on it, and it I think it, it looks like a phenomenal game. Astrobot is the only one that I'm not very familiar with. I actually had to watch some clips on that game yesterday. It's the only one that I haven't at least watched gameplay of or anyone else play or anything like that. And uh, wow, that game's a sleeper, dude. Astrobot, I remember when Astrobot came out on the PS4 and they had the VR game. It was for the VR one, one of the most beautiful experiences I, I had was being introduced to, I guess you could say, the PS4's mascot. Because that's basically what he was. Mm -hmm. And the world that they built for the VR was so slept on because I've always felt the PSVR got the Dreamcast treatment. A lot of it, it was ahead of its time and people weren't willing to... Y'all disrespected the Dreamcast and I'm going to stay on this horse for a while. But anyway. Dis disrespected. And because people weren't willing to give it a chance, it didn't go far. But those who did get to see Astro Boy, we couldn't get enough. We were like, who is this new this new kid on the block? He's he's Sony's Mario. This is right. adorable and I love it. And he was interactive with you. It was like he knew he was a game character and he knew that you were from the real world and the interaction between you two was just phenomenal. And I'm grateful that Sony didn't just abandon it and gave us a second chance and a second go with him. And I've been watching people play it and you can get it with, I think, a special controller. Now he's not in VR, so it's more accessible, which I think helped because all you needed to do was get the controller and you got the game well, and then boom. And obviously this game is popular enough and enjoyable enough that it, it made a nomination for Game of the Year. It, you know, and I think Astro Boy probably came in and took off whatever Nintendo game was going to slide in there. Really? I Because think about it. Nintendo usually always has a game in the finals. Yep. I mean, they got their own category, but... Or there's a Mario game. In or there's the thing a Mario is, is like, game. Like, PlayStation has... No, hold up. Does, does Sony own Crash Bandicoot? No, not anymore. Naughty Dog? I believe that's Microsoft Activision Blizzard. Oh, that's true. I I didn't realize that because I, I guess like growing up when I think of Naughty Dog and when I think of Crash Bandicoot, I always played it on the PlayStation. So I had forgotten that like they, uh, damn it, Microsoft. And then uh, and they then haven't done Spyro. anything with it. When I think of Spyro, I think of PlayStation. Yeah. Back in the uh, PS1 era. Sony. And then when I think of, when I think of Tomb Raider, I think of PlayStation, even though it also came out on the Dreamcast as well. Yeah. Originally. But Sony, or I say PlayStation, has never had a true Mario. Master Chief. Master Chief type. Like, they've never had like a mascot. Like, when you, when I think of Nintendo, I think of Zelda. I think of Mario. When I think of Sega, I think of Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Right? Even Sega had a, a mascot. When I think of Xbox, I think of Master Chief. And that's because, and I'm going to, I'll die on this hill. Xbox was only successful initially because of Halo. It was a huge selling point and it, and it, it was successful. Mm -hmm. And then now look at them. They're, Freaking <laughs> dollar, freaking multi billion dollar company in, in, in that regard. Well, you know, the console side. Uh, and then, you know, PlayStation, I can think of plenty of characters on the, on the PlayStation side. But not but one none of that them was, stick out as a mascot. That was a mascot. Yeah. So that's, I think that's pretty cool. So, but anyways, all, all these games look amazing. Yeah. They, they look like they're, they're up there and they're up there fairly. I just don't think a DLC needs to be in that in that I do, category. Yeah, I don't think a DLC needs to be Enough there. Enough DLCs come out every year that it they can have their own damn category. Here's what I think and probably that would, happened. That would set a precedence for more healthy 
competent competition within DLCs to put out better DLCs that feel more like sequels and additions to a game than just microtransactional half-assed BS. So here's what I think happened. Astro Boy came in pretty late into the, you know, well, not, I don't want to say late. It had more time than the Mario game that came out last year, like right before the Game Wars and got a slot in the, in the finals. Either they didn't have, either Nintendo didn't have a strong contender because I know their last Mario and Luigi game was getting critically panned left and right for whatever reason. Or if you looked at the people's choice category, I'm going to skirt my own rule here and give a quick, quick nod to the to gamer's choice. Killer Blade is in the running for that. And I'm guessing they didn't want to put Stellar Blade in the finals because the pushback that that would get for politically cor correct right is reasons there are Stellar Blade and a handful of other games I do like they they should they're all great they would make great competitors great nominations for game of the awards I, I'm sure we all have our personal thoughts on like a game or two that could definitely be swapped out Stellar Blade is one of them it was a fantastic game yeah but so yeah, I had a lot of unfortunate like very silly pushback and who knows the Sony a Katakawa deal might be affecting why Shadow of the Earth Tree is you know getting put into the limelight which I just want to tell people please don't blame FromSoft for this it's not like they asked for the slot and they got it. It's just, yeah, it's the powers that be working their magic behind the scenes. So who knows? But the Game Awards coming up, I would love to see Metaphor Refantasio win. Personally, I played half the list of the, you know, finalists and Metaphor Refantasio definitely trumped all of them for me. And this is, and I platinum Black Myth Wukong, so. I can't believe you platinum that game, dude. I platinum Black Myth Wukong, and it was hard for me to pick between the two. But Metaphor happened to uh, take it by just that much more for me. So what were your guys' votes? Did you go and vote? Let us know. We And it, did your game win? Hit us up in our comment section on the YouTube video. And hit us up on our website, jeezychopshoppodcast.com. And we'll have a full in-depth episode post game awards so make sure to check that out now final topic for this episode what's up with dan to dan and i don't mean that in a negative way i'm gonna for the say show it. itself i'm gonna say it I'm, I'm gonna say the quiet part out loud these new anime fans need to go back to what they were doing before 2020 <laughs> y'all are annoying not all y'all, but most of y'all are really annoying now. Like, if you come in and jump on these bandwagons, and maybe you jump on the bandwagon and you do discover the anime is fun, and then you try to, like, and not just anime, dude. Marvel, freaking Dungeons and Dragons, everything that made nerdy people and, and, and things that were actually fun and, and fantastical and enjoy. And y'all come in and you nitpick and you almost, you just make up stuff to be mad about people are like oh there's fan service and dan no there's not there's you being creepy and weird and seeing that for yourself and you're seeing that yep. don't put that on everybody else yep. and then the whole uh you know dan to dan it, it's a comedy it's a comedy with some dark themes and uh you had mentioned it before that that they they really uh, make fun of aliens and probing and stuff and they kind of utilize that in some borderline traumatic things and there was a lot of pushback on that and like oh my god like literally it was just like i never like chill out obviously you've never seen first you've never seen things like berserk or goblin slayer and things that are traumatic and people want to act like horrible traumatic things do not have a place in media when they do serve a purpose in storytelling when done correctly and that's what it does. It does it correctly, and, the, and, it, and it balances the dark themes with the awkwardness, silliness, and funny moments of being growing up. Yeah. And, and 
being a teenager and and being in this like weird funny moments and and they balance it so well that I feel like that's a sort of charm that this show has and I had mentioned before that even the uh the um author himself uh Yukinobu uh Tatsu I'm probably butchering his name but you know whatever come at me <laughs> but he uh he actually took a lot of uh so well, not I say a lot but quite a bit of inspiration from uh, an old manga called Jarinko Chi and uh, it was also an anime as well I think it had like 60 something episodes but uh that it's an old manga that was serialized in like the 70s through I think the 90s but he cited a quote from the manga about how the worst thing to be is hungry and alone and that is why he emphasizes uh, the importance of familial intimacy within the eating scenes and the coming together uh, as a as sort of a family after every traumatic event and and hard times that are shown in the anime and i just thought that, that that was really cool it definitely adds a nice touch to the show it's like like you said they after they've come out of this grand adventure where their lives are literally on the line they're all sitting down eating sushi or having a beef bowl and then they're just the antics and and you know tongue-in-cheek moments between them afterwards it's kind of like we just survived by the skin of our teeth and we're Man. thankful we're all still here together and yeah. as you notice the family keeps getting bigger mm -hmm. and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger and bigger and it's like, all are welcome all are everyone welcome. is welcome and uh you know if you haven't read the manga i highly recommend it because the the manga just gets better and better and better but i will say i don't know why people are coming at uh dan to dan because y'all were quiet on on the on the the fan service on my hero academia while y'all were gassing it up y'all were quiet you yep. said nothing not that I have a problem with it. Like, within reason, fan service doesn't bother me. I'm here for the story. Whatever. I, I don't care. Fairy tale? Have y'all seen fairy tale? I've seen fairy Have y'all watched fairy tale? Like, I'm just curious. Amazing anime. Amazing. I actually own all the mangas. Great. I love this story. It's just, it's just fun and heartwarming. It, it's a lot of fairy tale, and it's about, about family a ton of fans like it's only fan service like that's what it is i think it y'all are coming down after to... dan to dan like chill out i also think it comes down this is where social media is also the problem clips taken out of context or turned yep. into memes yep and people Don't do help. it for clout yeah and views so they'll take a clip and they'll be like oh, they're doing this or that and like no they're not you're just you're just you're you're taking a product and you're you're destroying this product and making it look a certain way yeah. so that you can benefit from it. And then you're getting a bunch of other people riled up that have no, they don't even know. They don't, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, go back to t before 2020. Y'all are getting on my nerves. Yeah. Take, take a breather, take a step back, actually read the source material, read the author's thoughts on it. And here's a huge one. And I don't know why people don't do this. If you don't like it, stop watching. That's the, that's the crazy part. Just that simple. There's anime that did things that I'm like, I can't vibe with this. And guess what? I stopped watching because me trying to change this author's direction because it doesn't fit my personal preference makes no sense to me. I, I wouldn't will... want people trying to change my direction on my story because it doesn't fit their headcanon. I... I, I... On that note, I highly recommend, if you guys like Dan to Dan, I highly recommend you go on High Dive and you watch Dark, Dark Gathering. Dark Gathering. Go watch Dark Gathering. All, all, what is it, 25 episodes? Yep. Yeah. Go enjoy that. Yeah. You'll be coming back to Dan to Dan like, it's so nice to have lightheartedness. Yeah, I'm still traumatized. Yep. Go ahead, watch Dark Gather, and then come back and it's see. Great, if you by still the way. Complain. But oh my God. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest pieces of horror fiction I've ever watched. But yeah, I, I love it. But yeah, definitely not a. Definitely watch it in a happy mindset because you won't be happy afterward. <laughs>
But what are your guys' thoughts? Do you feel Dan to Dan is just, it's doing its thing and needs to keep going? Or are you on the side of it's going too far and it needs to reel it back? Why? Let us know your comments. We may agree to disagree. We, and then we may or may not reply depending on how you deliver your comment. But let us know on YouTube or hit us up on our website, gzchopshoppodcast.com, where you can find all of the links on how to reach us. Yeah. It's been a, definitely a very busy, busy month ahead of us. So get ready for some more amazing episodes. And guys, do not forget to check out Magic Mind. The link will be in the description. Make sure you get yourselves that subscription or grab yourself a one-time purchase. Just for being a friend of the show, use code CHOPSHOP20 at checkout and grab yourself some Magic Mind. Do the seven-day challenge with me. I, I'm i loving it. I, it it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So go do that. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this episode. Take care of yourself and each other, and we will catch all of you on the next podcast.